business card and you say MBA from Harvard University, the person looking at you is completely out of his mind saying, wow, I'm meeting somebody from Howard University who has a master's degree. He will not be able to make, or he will not make a mistake. Their judgment is impaired. What they would hear is only good thing. What they would see is only positive. They will never be able to analyze it subjectively, looking at it. If somebody say, tells them that I'm a graduate from a Urdu college or Urdu University now in Karachi. So it's, it's a perception mindset that they use a matter of fun. I mean, 75 billion is a substantial amount. Is a substantial, the guy has been, in, I think, sentenced to 86 years, or he's already 76, 80, 80 70? 140. 140 years of in, in prison. I mean, he, he will spend his life in prison, but he got away with it for the last 25, 30 years. He got away with it. So that's the problem. And uh, WorldCom is another example of the failure in operational risk department. Had the operational risk department in those companies been proactive and highlighted those problems to the management or to the auditors, audit department, I'm sure they, they are aware. And that's where it, it links together with the commitment from the top. So if you see Madoff was all himself running the wrong investment fund was linked, so he was not implementing the policies that was advised by the operational risk area. Maybe they have this operational risk area and they advised him correctly, do this, do this. They must have not done it. Or the operational risk area must have advised them to cover their risk, not the risk of the client, because my loyalty is to my employer who pays me money. I'm not going to be loyal to somebody who's coming from outside because we'll make the loss. Like any bank, you know, any business, you cannot be loyal to the customer. Customer can be loyal to the company. Companies are not loyal to the customer because companies are there to make profit. These days, ethical issues are getting combined into it, and there are a lot of uh, ethical things like child labor and uh, uh, fair trade things going on, if you read the articles in the, in the chartered accounting magazines and things like that. So now we are merging these things together. Social, corporate social responsibility is a big thing these days. So we're changing global image of the companies that we're doing good things here, good things there. So it's, it's another marketing technique, but at least something is happening in that direction. Coming back to your thing about the matter fund, that was the biggest problem with the matter fund, that people saw them in a different light. People saw them as angels because they had the same look. It's the same perception. I mean, you walk into New York JFK airport with a beard and a Pakistani passport or any passport. I mean, if it's a Pakistani passport, forget about it. You're straight walking into the room for a strip search. If you have a Muslim name, if you have a Pakistani passport or if you have a beard, they'll take you out from separate. And, and how, how bizarre it is that, that it, it made me laugh that it was called random selection for search. When one of my friends was standing there, he said, 20 people are in the line. Pakistanis, Indians, all Muslims with beard. The point to tell you here is that it's a perception. People look at somebody with a beard the first projected image on the media is of Osama bin Laden. Now they think, oh my God, he might be sitting with him. He must have been there. People will ask you questions. They look at you on a perception. Similarly, we have a perception that somebody from the Western world comes here with more knowledge. We do have. People do have more knowledge in there. But if you see a Caucasian or, or, or an English person standing giving a speech, suddenly, People become more acute listener to the person who's delivering this speech. With no, with no offense, I'm not directing it to myself or <laughs> you guys, but it's just a perception because those are the developed economies. We look up to them. And they have achieved excellence in some areas, and that's true for everything. You know, if somebody with a beard, you look at them and you ask them a religious question, you won't ask two people come standing together, one clean shaved in a suit, other one in a beard and shalwar kameez and all that. 
If I ask somebody to ask them a question, you would go to the person. So it's the outlook that Madoff changed the outlook of the same thing, which some of Dadabai did in, earlier in this country, about in 86 or something, 86, 87, that, that time period. So those frauds were run on the same ground, with different faces, different approach. Nothing different in there. It went bankrupt because people stopped giving money. Madoff was more uh, sort of... Uh, sort of a kind of a person who was very very shrewd or who was very very cunning in, in his technique so we get back to this operation risk internal control and business environment we've said enough on this flexible and robust framework is we need to be flexible as per the market market changes every day every morning seven o'clock your market opens up seven o'clock FX traders are there six o'clock in the morning in London these guys are very sharp, they're there right on time, 6 o'clock in the morning, to catch the last hours of the Tokyo market. They have to be on the go. They get up at about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. And these guys on their desk until 7. And then people like me, dragging them on, checking their operational risk exposures. We go back and say, cancel this transaction, the risk is huge, we cannot take it. So, it's a measure between the two, shall we do it, shall we not do it. There are internal data risks, external data risk, scenario analysis, everything we do, we have softwares for running these procedures, these protocols. So internal data, you have previous history against a company, you have previous history against a certain market. Uh, earthquake in Japan, nobody would invest in Japanese company at that point, at that time, because the data would show that the prices will go down if it's a risk on there. Scenario analysis, you create a similar scenario. What happened in the last Kobe disaster in 19, uh, was it 1995 or 92, the Kobe earthquake? People looked at it and say, okay, we had a scenario plan which would highlight what the plan was, how much we lost, how much we gained. So is this the good time to buy, is it the good time to sell? What's our risk? risk? Risk, risk exposure, I can't speak now, I think. Uh, scenario analysis. Uh, that's kind of internal control and business environment factor. Business environment factor, very important uh, from Pakistan, from Karachi perspective. Would you want to invest one rupee in the most troubled area of sort of Orangi town? 1,000 yard plot for 100 rupees. I'll sell 10 plots now. How many people would want to buy it? None. Why? Huge risk. You'll not be able to go there. Even if you are, you're risking. You're taking a risk on your life. So, business environment factor, political factor, how things are run, how things are done in that country, in that area, in that region. Those are the political environments that we look at. Insurance and mitigation techniques, we again say, these are the same things that we look at. Um, in an insurance environment, what type of insurance company are covering the risk in that area. I mean, there are certain areas in, in, in African countries where insurance companies would say, no, we will not cover the transaction for those countries. Uh, it is becoming similar to, the, to Pakistan. If the foreign nationals want to come here and they want to take a life insurance, the value has tripled. So before you could buy a life insurance uh, for Pakistan, traveling to Pakistan for 50 pounds for the full year. Now you have to pay 150 pounds. So it's basically dependent on your circumstances. It is evident that the risk is inherent part of the banking industry. I would probably extend myself here and I would say risk is the inherent part of the business. Any business that you do, it's an inherent part. Risk management can only point in the correct direction to resolve problems, mitigate and reduce losses. It is not a magic wand that you say risk management and you go in profit. No. It can direct you and tell you where the problems are, how you can resolve them. However, it is dependent on the risk appetite of the institution, industry and allowance provided by the regulatory bodies in a given environment. Now, over here, State Bank is the regulatory body for the banks. And there are loss limit, ceiling limits, those who are familiar with the financial industry know that there are ceiling limits for FX, uh, foreign exchange. You can keep certain